We just wrapped up with National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, but I feel like this could be every month because we're hearing about so many cyber attacks, ransomware um, that have been happening lately. And this is a huge and growing problem, but what can we do to prevent this from happening? So with me, Marshall Irwin, the Chief Security Officer at Mozilla to give us some tips, talk a little bit about the current state of cybersecurity. So welcome, Marshall, great to have you. Well, thank you for having me here. So uh, it seems to me like this is a growing problem. I hear about this about every day. Uh, is that um, actually what the data supports? Yeah, that's right. I mean, you see it in the news, but also at, at Mozilla, you know, we see it on a daily basis in terms of the, the risks presented to the users of our products. Um, you know, I've been working in the cybersecurity field for almost two decades now. And it's interesting going back two decades where we had this sense that there was this looming crisis, but we weren't there yet. And now I think everybody can see and feel you're in the middle of that crisis right now. You especially feel it when you're the victim of a cyber attack or, or a hacker. So. Yeah. So what do you see from Mozilla's point of view? Because you also have email too, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got like web hosting and then email. And, and I hear that a lot of these attacks come through phishing emails. Is, is that true? Yeah, so phishing is one of the, the main risks that I think everybody needs to be aware of today that can, it can be the, the method that an attacker uses to do things like compromise your inbox, compromise your email, or even just compromise your passwords or your device. Um, get a method on your device that can allow them to access your most sensitive information that you hold uh, through various services. Yeah. That's yeah. So what, so they get into your computer and install malware or something, or they can figure out what your credit card numbers are, or like, what yes. are some of the most common things, the nefarious things that these cyber hackers do? Yeah. So you mentioned phishing. There's kind of two flavors of, of phishing that people should be, be aware of. The first is kind of where you will receive an email in your inbox and that will trick you into disclosing your password or even your credit card information. So there might be a link in there that causes you to click to a website. The website looks legitimate, but actually it's not legitimate. It's just tricking you into disclosing, maybe it asks you to enter your password, or maybe it asks you to enter your credit card information. So that's a very sort of classic form of phishing that will get people to disclose sensitive information like your credit card or your password. Another slightly more sophisticated version is when you're prompted to install or download something onto your computer, and that can give whoever's trying to hack you access to whatever is on your device um, in a much more sort of pernicious fashion. Yeah. Now, there's two th two types of emails I've been getting lately. So, and I think they're both phishing things. So, one of them is um, take a survey on the COVID vaccine. And then um, I think somehow, I don't even do it. I just delete it. And mm -hmm. then um, another one, oh, and then I'll get something like, oh, we, we saw your LinkedIn profile and you like look interesting to do like a business relationship or a partnership with. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's suspicious too. So <laughs> the, the, how do you know? How do you know when something is, is kind of fishy? Yeah, it can be really tricky, uh, frankly. That's why it's worthwhile always being uh, a little bit on your guard, doing things like, don't click or download software from people that, that from, from email addresses that you don't recognize. So it's some, some basic stuff like that that can help. Um, sometimes a phishing attack will come from an attacker that misspells things accidentally. So there are a few things like that you can look for, but even the best, most security-minded people sometimes can fall for these attacks, especially the most sophisticated ones where it can be really hard to tell a legitimate email from uh, someone trying to trick you and doing something. Doing something. Yeah, well, and one thing I've done is if I think it's, it seems fishy is all kind of cut and paste what they say and I will Google that. And then I will see other reports of people who've been like, oh, this is a phishing email or I get this weird email. And so then that that's kind of a red flag too to stay away from email, yeah. just delete it. Yeah, I think the, but the, the, the most important thing, just basically cl don't, don't click or download software from people that you don't know, you don't know who they are from, from unknown sources. That's a, a useful rule of them to, to keep in mind. And we see like with these ransomware attacks, they're entering these companies through emails, right? So it's an employee that clicks on, That's is right. there anything a small business or even a big business can do to prevent that? Yeah, so I almost both, uh, but the standard consumers, as well as companies like Mozilla, 
we are constantly under attack. Sadly, that, that is the case. But there are some baseline things that everybody can do. So our employees all use things like multi-factor authentication, which can make it much harder for a phishing email to actually get access to our systems. The same thing should be true for consumers. Consumers should all use things like multi-factor authentication, so it's harder to compromise your accounts. Uh, and also one of the key things that we encourage everyone to use with our employees as well as general consumers is password managers, super useful. Everybody should be using a password manager at this point. I've got my parents using them. If you use one, great. Encourage all of your family members to use a password manager. How do you start using a password manager? <laughs> yeah. So to first take a step back about why password managers are really so critical, it's important that you never reuse your password, first of all, because when, you're, when you reuse a password, if that password is then breached, at some point in the future, that can compromise a bunch of your, your other accounts. And so it's important not to reuse your password and use all strong, strong passwords. That introduces some challenges though, because you can't remember all of these unique strong passwords. So that's where the password manager comes in. Okay. There's a bunch of uh, password managers. You can actually use them. Uh, they're often built into the browser. So the browser can remember your passwords so you don't have to fill them in each time. Or you, you can use third-party services like uh, LastPass or 1Password are really good, good services as well. Okay, so LastPass and 1Password. So those are good ones. And you just download that? That's right. Or okay. of course, like, like I said, your browser. Uh, the, all the browsers come with sort of uh, tools that will remember your passwords. Firefox, of course, the one that Mozilla wants you to use, um, but the browsers can be a really useful password manager. Okay, tool. good to know, because the two-factor I do use, but the password manager I don't, but sounds like maybe I should. <laughs> yes, without a doubt. So, okay, any final thoughts about how people can be, because I feel like ultimately it rests with us to just be a little personally accountable and a little scrutinize those emails just a little bit more than maybe what we have been doing. And that might prevent a lot of this. Exactly. You know, the these sort of threats can be kind of intimidating and complex. We don't always understand them. But the basic things you can do uh, often are pretty easy. Like I said, don't reuse your passwords. Use a password manager. Keep your software up to date. That's the stuff that a security professional is doing uh, intuitively all the time and the, the thing that we would encourage all consumers to do. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Marshall. Great advice. We can't hear it enough because it feels like it's happening so much. So thank you so much. Thank you for your time.